Konnichiwa! Today's show is the first part of a two-part series where we take a look at the console wars. The best console wars. The 16-bit console wars. The Sega Mega Drive and Genesis versus the Super Nintendo. If you were a kid during this time, you'll remember how we used to dish out these fake facts about how great our console was. To convince the other side that they were wrong. To convince them to join your side and your console. Well, it's time to put your fanboy hats back on as we take a look at why the Mega Drive was so much better than the Super Nintendo. Game on! Now, when I was a kid, I had the Sega Mega Drive and a little later, I managed to get myself a Super Nintendo as well. But when I was out with my friends, I definitely had my Sega fanboy hat on. Now before you kick off, in our next show we will be taking a look at the SNES and why it was so much better than the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis and we'll be fact bashing the hell out of that Mega Drive. And if you live in the future, you can click on this link here and watch that video now. This is a console war video, so make sure you're in the comments below fighting your console's corner. Make sure you hit that like button if you prefer pixels over polys and let's see why the Sega Mega Drive was so much better than the Super Nintendo. Now Nintendo fanboys will always insist that the Super Nintendo absolutely destroys the Sega Mega Drive and Sega Genesis every single time. But this is completely untrue. In fact, most games were on par between the two systems. And in fact, some games were even better on the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. And you just need to take a look at the console's technical specs and performance to see how true this actually is. <laughs> Now the Mega Drive and Genesis run smoother and with less input lag and that's because it has a Motorola 68000 processor in it which runs at a whopping 7.67 MHz whereas the SNES was stuck with a mere 3.58 MHz and the Ricoh 5A22S CPU that's nearly half the processing power of the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. Now it is true that the Super Nintendo was capable of outputting a higher resolution than the Sega Mega Drive. It can handle an output of 512 by 239 but there is not a single game that used this resolution. In fact only a few games would use this resolution for their front screens. Whereas the Mega Drive and Genesis outputted at 320 by 240 and nearly every single game used this resolution. So your Mega Drive and Genesis games were a higher resolution than the Super Nintendo. A better quality picture. But our Nintendo fanboys always say, ah, but the Super Nintendo could push out 128 sprites compared to the mere 80 sprites that the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis could output. But the Super Nintendo could only be output 128 sprites if they were low resolution and if they were all exactly the same size. Whereas the Mega Drive could output 80 sprites of any size simultaneously on screen. The Mega Drive also had built-in hardware that handled backwards compatibility. This is the Motorola 68000. This is the Mega Drive CPU. And this is the Master System Z-Lock Z80 8-bit processor down here. You could buy the Sega Powerbase which sat on top of your Sega Mega Drive and all this essentially did was allow the form factor of the Sega Master System games to plug into your Mega Drive. The device literally acted as a pass-through and the Powerbase did include a little bit of tech in there which allowed the Mega Drive to switch from its Motorola 68000 process to the Z80 processor of the Master System. A better processor that made your games faster, higher resolution that made your games look better, built-in backwards compatibility for all of your old games catalogue. The Mega Drive was just a better choice in every aspect there. But what about sound? <laughs> The SNES has the better sound chip, right? It definitely creams the Sega Mega Drive. Get back in your corner, fanboy. The Mega Drive had an FM synthesis chip in it, which made any game with an EDM soundtrack in it absolutely amazing. Case in point, the Streets of Rage series, one of the best soundtracks ever released on a 16-bit console. 
only thing that let the Mega Drive down and that fantastic FM synthesis was the fact that Western developers preferred to use the Gem Sound Engine, which was terrible on the Sega Mega Drive. Now it is true that the SNES did have a more advanced sound chip in it that allowed it to play samples, but samples need a lot of memory to sound good, and the Super Nintendo just didn't have it, and so what you ended up with was a low quality sample rate on all of your games. Whereas the Mega Drive's FM synthesis solution actually used very little memory, and so the quality of the sound was so much higher. The fact is that if you want a high quality soundtrack, you need to go to the Sega Mega Drive. We just have to accept the facts here. The Sega Mega Drive is a far more sexier looking console. Whilst the PAL SNES looks like a Playmobil space case, the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis look like a serious bit of AV equipment. Its more aggressive looks and lines are complemented by a number of additional outputs that are just not present on the Super Nintendo. It includes things like a volume jack for headphones and audio output, and a volume slider. And that Super Nintendo, well, that was also super prone to yellowing. You can just tell a lot more thought went into the release of the Sega Mega Drive. The fact that you can take your Sega Master System joypads and plug them into your Mega Drive and they will work, or take your Sega Mega Drive pads and plug them into your Master System and they will work, just shows that Sega were thinking about the consumer and that back catalogue of games that they already had. Whereas Nintendo opted for proprietary ports on pretty much everything except for the RF connection at the back. The Mega Drive cartridges were also smaller than the Super Nintendo and somehow still managed to get more of a label, more of that awesome artwork onto the front of their cartridge. Added to that, Nintendo made this insane decision to put all their games in cardboard boxes. Cardboard boxes that most people have chucked away now. Whereas Sega Mega Drive owners got to have VHS-like plastic cases, which means collectors today of Sega Mega Drive games can pretty much always guarantee that they'll have a complete inbox version of the game. As collectors of Sega Mega Drive games, we pay way less for our games than collectors of complete inbox of Super Nintendo games. And while we're on the subject of the form factor of these consoles, let's not forget that you could upgrade your Mega Drive. You could get the Mega CD, which made it one of the first CD-based consoles, and you could upgrade your Mega Drive to a 32-bit gaming machine by buying a 32X. Not only that, there are 11 versions of the Sega Mega Drive that came out, which means I can choose the form factor that best suits my gaming and my games room. Which means me, the Mega Drive owner, will always have a better console than you, the Super Nintendo owner, with your FX chip. <laughs> But this gets serious. It's not about the technical specs of the console, what the console looks like. It's all about games, right? Now to start off with, as a Nintendo owner, you're already at a disadvantage. And that's because Nintendo had censorship on their consoles. A game like Flashback, an absolute technical marvel of the 16-bit gaming era. It was not only technically impressive, but visually stunning. And yet, the Super Nintendo managed to fluff this with an absolutely terrible technical performance on the game. And if that wasn't bad enough, it had been censored in the most stupid of ways. Because of Nintendo censoring requirements, Death Tower, a pivotal point in the game, had to be renamed to Cyber Tower. It gets worse than this. One of the best fighters ever released on the 16-bit consoles, Mortal Kombat, that violent game, the game that lived off of how gruesome it was, was censored. No blood and some of the fatalities were taken out completely in the Super Nintendo version. The same goes for Robocop vs Terminator. Now, if you take away the fact that the Mega Drive version was better, it played better, the resolution was better, the frame rate was better, it had the gore and guts that you'd expect from a Robocop game. But not in the Super Nintendo version. It seems that in the Super Nintendo version, everyone was an android. And so all they did was blow up and not very impressively either. Now if we put censorship firmly to one side and we take a look at ports, then again the Mega Drive comes out on top, especially when it comes to Neo Geo games. 
For whatever reason, the ports on the Super Nintendo were terrible. But for the Sega Mega Drive, the developers went out of their way to sometimes completely rebuild the game for the Sega Mega Drive. And the performance showed. Bigger sprites, better backgrounds, it ran smoother and the input lag was non-existent compared to the Super Nintendo versions. The Mega Drive and Genesis wasn't just great for sports games and arcade games and Twitch games, it was perfect for shmups. That 7 GHz processor in the Sega Mega Drive meant that you had less latency, less lag and a faster game. The 320x240 resolution meant that you had a superior looking game. Shmups on the Super Nintendo would often suffer from slowdown, but on the Sega Mega Drive you were playing your shmups at blistering speeds. The Mega Drive was just outright superior for sports games. So if you're a sports games fan, then you could only get the best experience, the best sporting experiences on the Sega Mega Drive. And this is the reason why EA was sat on the Mega Drive and had such a huge collection of games released for the system. Now, if we're going to be fair about this, the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo had duds and blockbusters. But this is a fanboy video. Let's face it, the Mega Drive was for real gamers. For gamers that want arcade quality ports in their living room. For gamers that want Twitch gaming with that super fast processor. And for gamers that really love their sports games. If you were a real man or woman, you'd be on a Sega Mega Drive. Let's face it, the Super Nintendo was for kids. That's it for this week's Retro Gamer Boy show. I hope you join me next week when we stick on our Nintendo fanboy hat and absolutely destroy the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis with our Super Nintendo facts. Remember, if you're a retro games lover, to subscribe by clicking on my little pixel head below. And if you can't wait until next week's video, then you can check out my huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos, two of which you can find over here.